Try to remember it. You'll see the church van with the number on the side of it. Anytime you need a ride, and tell people about that. I know this church you can go to, and if you don't have a vehicle, they'll pick you up and take you back home. Come on in the building, all right, and feel this synergy and worship with your sisters and brothers in Christ because the word said, forsake not the assembly of yourself with the saints. This anointing is transferable. You sick, you may come in the building and get healed, amen? Somebody may lay hands on you. Plus, the presence of the Lord is here. All right, now, we're going to continue to worship in scripture and then in prayer. So continue to worship with us. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Would you please stand up and open your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to start at the 12th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at the 12th verse, where we read about the importance of Christ's resurrection. The word of God reads, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. May Lord have blessed on the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Pastor Wilson. Amen. Amen, everybody. Uh, let's bow your heads for prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, my Father, Oh, Father, we just come today, Father, we're just so thankful it just to be once again in your house of worship. Oh, Father, first, we just want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, Father, thank you because you said in the beginning, Father, in the beginning was the word. The word was with you, O oh Father. And then you even said that the word became flesh and dwelled among the people. And Father, we just want to just thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only begotten son down here to dwell among us. Oh Father, we just want to just send up a, a praise this morning to you. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, first of all, it's just for the gift of life. Because, Father, we understand that somebody did not wake up this morning. Oh, Father, you rose up this morning. You put us in our right mind. And you gave us a reasonable amount of our health this morning. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Oh, Father, you said, let everyone that has breath praise the Lord. And we're going to praise you this morning. Oh, Father, we rose up, Father. Oh, Father, I just said victory right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you gave me another chance this morning. Oh, Father, you gave me another opportunity this morning and just to see some more of your goodness and some more of your grace, Father, because you said that you would give that to us each and every day. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Oh, Father, and Father, everybody got a truth that, oh, that they saying. 
But Father, my Bible tells me that there's only one truth. Oh, Father, oh, Father, that Jesus Christ is the truth. And Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That nobody comes unto the Father but through him. Oh, Father, then you also said, oh, Father, in John 3, 16, you said that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son, that who shall ever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Father, we're going to believe that. We're going to stand on that. I don't care if people come from the left or come from the right with all kind of, oh, idolatry or philosophies or any more of the fees, Father. But I'm going to stand on your truth. I'm going to stand on your son's truth this morning, Father, that he is the only way. And Father, he loves us so much that he said that uh, he go away to prepare a place for us, Father. Oh, that where he is, that we'll be also. And he also said that if he prepare the place, that he will return to receive us unto himself. And I'm going to stand on that today, Father. And Father, I just thank you so much. Oh, Father, because you said that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And Father, we're going to stand on that today. Oh, Father, oh, we ask him for a blessing today in this building, Father. We ask him for a visitation of your Holy Spirit today in this place today. Let this service be like none other, Father, that we have ever seen, Father. Oh, Father, let your spirit run free through each and everybody's life today. Free enough, strong enough that it would affect change the way we think the way we live, the way we treat each other, Father. Oh, Father, let us just get rid of all those strongholds this morning, Father. Let your anointing flow this morning, Father. And we thank you this morning. And we claim victory in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop praising him in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As a song that said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise shall what? Be continually in my mouth. My soul will magnify the Lord. Oh, the humble will hear and be glad. Oh, somebody said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Amen. Isn't it good to praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. And see, we have to learn how to praise the Lord in the good times and in the bad times. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says men should always, what, pray and not cease. Amen. Glory to God. He said rejoice. Come on now. Always. And then he said, again, I say rejoice. In other words, God says, I need us, I need you to have a level of joy that the enemy can't mess with. Oh, I don't care what he does. I need you to have a level of joy. Watch this then. In me that the enemy can't touch it. Amen. Glory to God. And see, that's why in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your mess, you can still have joy. Amen. Glory to God. Ah, glory. Well, we lift up our musician this morning. He's not feeling well, but God is able. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. He can do what, what, what men can't do, God can do. Amen. Uh, he specializes in, 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 in what men say is impossible. Amen. Glory to God. And, 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 and glory, since he specializes in that, since God specializes in doing the impossible, one of the things that he asks us to do, according to scripture, is to not ever stop doing the goodness of God. Not ever to never stop doing those things that we know God considered as good as it relates to him. Amen. Or to love one another. Amen. To pray for one another. Amen. To stand in the gap for one another. Amen. God wants us to love one another. Amen. And he always wants us to do good toward one another. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And so that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Not, don't stop doing the good of God. Amen. Don't stop doing good. Amen. Uh, I want you to open up, uh, up your Bible. You're going to see it on the, on the, on the, on the screen. And, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to run to verse 9 of Galatians chapter 6. Well, let's just look at 7, 8, and 9. Galatians chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9. And that's the scriptures that we're going to be coming from this morning as we look at uh, the thought of not stopping doing the good of God. Look what he says. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. 
For what for he that sows unto the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Father God, we thank you today. We glorify you today. We magnify you today. We thank you, O oh God, that you've put a goodness on the inside of us. And we thank you, that God, that you are magnifying that goodness, that we carry that goodness of you into the world. Now, God, as we go through this time of preaching and teaching, none of me, O oh God, but all of you, Holy Spirit, teach us from your word today how to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the faith, in doing the goodness of you, our God. We decree and declare that it is so in Jesus' name. If you agree, shout amen and have a seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So again, God doesn't want us to stop doing good. Amen. The amplified version of Galatians 6 and 9 says this. Let us not lose heart or grow weary or faint in acting noble and doing right. For in due time, you will, at the appointed season, you will reap. Glory to God. If you not loosen or relax your courage and faint. So find somebody and say, it takes courage to keep doing good. It takes courage, amen, to keep going, doing good. See, you see, the enemy is going to fight you when, glory to God, when, you, when, 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 the, when, when you've done something to, 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 to mess up or, or somebody done did, did, has done something to you. The enemy is going to fight you as it relates to you still being good to them. Ah, uh, come on now. So it takes courage from God to say, in spite of what happened to me. In spite of what they did to me, I'm still going to be faithful to God and do what God taught, called me to. See, because the Bible says to be able to do good and don't do it or to be able to give and don't give it, it's a sin. Amen. And so I don't want to sin. Tell you, I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. I, and I don't want to assume that, that I haven't sinned when I done messed up. It takes, oh, it takes courage to keep doing what God called you and I to do. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. In the Good News Bible, he says it like this. Let us, let, uh, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. J at, at j <laughs> excuse me. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest of blessings if you don't give up. Amen. See, the enemy knows that God is going to bless you when you stay God's course. When you stay God's course, he knows that God's going to bless you. And so he does everything he can to get you off course. But tell your neighbor, stay on course. Stay on course. Stay on course. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 7 in the English Standard Version. It says this. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. How many know that God don't miss nothing? The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch over the evil and the good. Amen. Oh, Psalms 33, 18. Look what he says. Behold, the eye of the Lord are on those who fear him and those who... Glory to God, who hope in his steadfast love. Amen. And now look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You see, the more you focus on the good of God, the less attention you will pay to the evil of the enemy. And the more you keep God in your focus, in your, in your, in your windshield, and get out of the, the negative things of your rearview mirror, God will show you, hallelujah, how you can keep doing good even in the face of adversity. Even in the face of every negative thing that you have to face, God will show you if you just keep doing good, baby. You just keep trusting me. You just keep, keep, keep trusting me. I'm, I'm going to get you through this. Amen. Look at Proverbs 16. Glory to God. Because sometimes you have to say, okay, pastor, you think talking about good. Well, what's some evil? Or well, let's look at it. In Proverbs chapter 6, hallelujah, verse 16 through 19, look what the word of God says. These six things the Lord hate. Yes, and seven are abominations to him. A proud look. How many advice that God resists the proud? And he gives grace to the humble. Amen. When you, see, when you think you the made it, when you think you're there, when you think you got it going on, that's when the enemy really going to come at you. Amen. It's one thing to have confidence in God. And then it's another thing to have to allow your confidence to trump, God, to, to trump God's. Stay with God. Tell your neighbor, stay with God. A lying tongue. See, God, God, the, the, see when, you, when you have a lying tongue, then, you, then, then I know who your daddy is. See, the, the Bible says the, the enemy is the father of lies. 
that he's the father of lies. He said, and that's what you do. So if you got a lying tongue, don't be running around here talking about the Lord told me to tell you. No, no, no. Hey, come on. If you got a lying tongue, come on now. Oh, he said, hands that shed innocent blood. He says, a heart that devises evil plan. You see, somebody, God knows my heart. When, when, while while you saying that, you thinking about somebody you don't like. And how many you know that his, if his eyes are on the evil and the good, he, all, he sees exactly what's in your heart. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? God. God knows your heart. Amen. And see, that's why you want to put yourself in the presence of God. And, and every now and then say, God, flush out of me anything in me that should not be. Take it out. What the song said, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I want to be saved. Amen. So every now and then, you got to, not every now and then, you need to stay before the Lord. Amen. That's the problem. Is that, thank you, Holy Ghost. The problem is we only want to come before the Lord every now and then. Oh, but what happens when you decide to stay with God all the time? Ooh, glory be to my God. Oh, uh, not only does your life change, but it forces the people around you to change. Either they are staying changed or they are going and leave. Oh, hallelujah. But if you keep staying, you stay with God. God has a way of rubbing off on folk. When the goodness of God is all over you, all over me. Woo, woo, God help me. When the goodness of the Lord is all over you, you can't contain it. And when you're around, oh, you ever been around a bubbly person? A bubbly person. My wife is bubbly. Hallelujah. Oh, sometimes I want to call her champagne. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Well, see, when you're around a bubbly person, they have a way of bringing you up. You ever been around a sour person? It don't take you long to get sour, does it? But see, that's why I thank you. Thank, thank you, God. When you allow the spirit of God to get on you, then start telling yourself, my bubbliness, that's one of my words, will trump their sourness. Oh, hallelujah. And so, so that, that's why every now and then I'm going to go around some sour people. Come on now. Because, hallelujah, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Because I know what God is able to do. Amen. I know what God, I know the anointing that's on me, and I know what the anointing will do. Amen. And so the anointing will remove the burden of that sourness that they're having and start to let them see a glimpse of what it's like to be in the presence of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. See, that's why you can't get weary in doing good. That's why, that's why you can't allow what goes on around you sometimes. You got to stay. You gotta, see, that's why you got to stay away from them folk that, that hate. Amen. Glory to God. The, uh, them hearts that are wicked. Feet that run swift to do evil. A false witness that speaks lies. Remember, I told you I know who your daddy is. Uh, and then one who sows discord. Among the brethren, amen. See, that's why Psalm says, don't sit in the council uh, 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 of the scornful, amen. See, you got to get away from around some of them folk, amen. Unless you got the spirit of God on you and God send you, say, go there. Amen. Are y'all with me? All right. So we got to stay away from those. See, see, good is not just a feeling. Amen. Good, being good or showing forth the goodness of God is not something that you just feel I'm going to do today. It's a character trait, amen? In, in other words, you got to live in being good. you got to live in the goodness of God. you got to live in the kindness of God. you got to live in the love of God. This is where you got to live. This is where you got to make your home. Amen? You see, and look, it takes courage and it takes faith to do it. Amen? Because the world's going to throw some stuff at you. Anybody ever gone through some stuff? We ain't got to name it, we ain't got to name it, we ain't got to name it, but we done went through some stuff. But here, here's the deal, don't allow the stuff to become all that you become. Don't, don't, don't allow the hurt mold you into something that you don't want to be molded into. And the way to confront that and keep that from happening, when the enemy comes in with evil, you choose on purpose to do good. Ooh, you choose on purpose to praise. You choose on purpose to worship. You choose on purpose to glorify God. Even when the enemy is telling you, you don't need to do that. Or, you know, even some, how many know, have, have you ever been told, Pastor, don't take all that? <laughs> or somebody just tell you, you know, it don't take all that. You man, they be running around the church and doing that. It don't, it don't, no, 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 no. Negro, you don't know. Come on now. So see, 
you don't know and you won't what now. You don't know when and see, see, you don't know what I feel. See, you don't see a lot of folks don't know the cost of the oil in your box. Hey, woo! they wonder why you broke it and poured it out. They don't know what the Lord done done for you. Woo, glory to God. And see, when you tell the story, you only tell half of it anyway. And see, sometimes, oh, can I talk? Maybe some, sometimes you can't tell it all because they can't handle it all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you got to get to the point where you allow the character of God to be so strong in you that you don't stop doing good. Amen. Find somebody said, don't stop good doing good. I shared this with uh, the I Can Fly group last night. I'm not going to get all deep into it, but three things that stop a person from doing good. Their past, their present, and their future. See, a lot of times when things that ha what happened in your past can be so devastating that you can't, you can't focus on the present or the future because you're too busy living in the past. And you're so, you're so tethered to the past that you can't enjoy what God is doing in your here and now. You're so tied to the past, you, can't re you don't even realize that the past is just that, the past. Hallelujah. God that gave you a brand new day filled with brand new mercies, loaded with brand new benefits. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. But you can't enjoy this day because you're so tethered to the past. Hallelujah. And see, sometimes the present, uh, because the past is so bad, though you, you, you can't even enjoy what God is doing with you now. Hallelujah. Well, you know, there was a time you was on a ventilator, but now you're breathing free. Come on, church. Talk back to me now. Oh, that was a time when, 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 when you didn't have no money in your pocket, but now you got $20. Glory to God. Now, that, that, that didn't seem like a lot, but glory to God, when you didn't have nothing. Anybody ever had no money? I ain't talking about a little money. I'm talking about no money. I'm talking about no, I'm, ta I'm talking about no money. You didn't know where the next thing to come on. But now look at you got more money. Tell me I said I got more money now. Hallelujah. And, and see, look, look, and see, you, got, you have to tell yourself, oh, I was wise, I was this, I was that, but in all of that, it was still God. It was still God, it was still God, it was still God, it was still God. He, 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 he told me what to do, he showed me what to do. I chose what to do, but it was still God. See, never factor God out of the equation. Amen, because God has factored you into it, amen. amen. Glory to God. Because he wants you to learn. Look, how many of them made some mistakes in your life? And see, look, when you, when, when you learn from the mistakes you made, guess what? God will use you even more because of the mistake that you made. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Because he realizes because you made that mistake and you rectified it, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to make that mistake again. Are, are you here? Amen. And so God won't waste the, the fact that you messed up. Don't you waste it. You learn from it, and now you apply what you learn to what God is calling you to do. That way you can ensure that you will have a future. Somebody say, I'm going to have a future in God. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. So you and I won't. Uh, see, Paul said in, in, in Philippians, you got to forget those things that are behind. You got to press toward the call of God, amen? See, see, if you're too busy looking in the rearview mirror, you can't drive straight. You can't, you know, you really can't enjoy what God is doing for you or wants to do for you in your present state because you're too busy looking at your past. But see, when you mature, you start to let go of the past. Find somebody that says, I'm growing up now. Oh, uh -huh, glory to God. See, the, the Bible says have, have childlike faith. The Bible don't say act childish. He says, I need you to have childlike faith, but when trouble comes, I don't need you acting childish. Amen. I need you to act like somebody who has a relationship with me, who knows that I'm going to help get you through whatever it is you're going through. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Hallelujah. What? Hallelujah. See, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he's a what? New creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Glory to God. See, look, how many know that we were all born and come from dysfunctional families? Hey, Amen. Can I talk to you a minute? Glory to God. Ooh, I feel your Holy Ghost. God is not all right with you not being all right. Amen. I want you to get that. I know the people teach today, it's okay not to be okay, but that ain't okay with God. Can I teach this thing? That is not okay with God. God did not design you or want you to live a dysfunctional lifestyle. And, and so God is not okay when you're not okay. 
God wants you healed. God wants you delivered. God wants you set free. Amen. So you got to get it out of your mind that it's okay for me not to be okay. And watch this now. You got to get with God and say, okay, God, how am I going to be okay? And let God show you. Let God grow you. Amen. Tell your neighbor it can't be done. But can I tell you something? People make, uh, the reason why the world, help me, Holy Ghost, I done got away from something. Well, the reason why the world wants you to be okay with being dysfunctional is because they make money off of your dysfunction. And as long as they can make money off of your dysfunction, they gonna do it. You got high blood pressure. You got to take this pill. And that's the only way you're going to get well. The devil is a lie. Jesus is still a healer. Glory be to my God. I'm depressed. Jesus said, ah, God help me. My peace. I leave with you. Not the peace of the world, but my peace. And when I give you something, the world can't take it away. But see, you and I got to receive that in our spirit. I heard somebody say, we got to break some stronghold. That's a stronghold. A stronghold is the fact that I, uh, you, we say we came from a dysfunctional family. But the Bible just told us, if any man be in Christ, hey, 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 he's a new, you've been born into a brand new family. That is not dysfunctional. You got to decide. You got to decide. You got to decide. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all all right? Amen. Okay. You know, when things happen in your past and you don't let them go, you can't enjoy the present nor look forward for the future because you're so tied to the past. Okay, okay, okay. I just so happened to watch a movie, and I just called the name of the movie because I, I forgot what it was, The Preacher and His Son. It just saying sounding right to me, amen, because all, all, all the elements in there. In this particular movie, glory to God, this preacher married, got a young pretty wife, and he has a, 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 a young son, uh, somewhere around 10, 11, 12, somewhere up in there. And a burglar breaks into their house, who's a white guy, the preacher's black, so like, burglar breaks into their house, who's a teenager. He's high on some drugs. The wife comes into the kitchen where he is, the, uh, uh, shocks him, and he stabs her, and he kills her. But he holds her while she's dying, and he says, while, while he's holding her, she says to him, I forgive you. And then she dies. He's caught. He goes to jail. The preacher and his son go on. Five, six years later, this man gets let out of jail. Amen. Gets let out of jail. He, he comes in. The preacher finds out because they got, got to notify you that they're getting out of jail. The preacher said, I want him to come to work for me. You can't get weary in doing what's good. Preacher says, I want him to come work for me. But when he comes to work for him, the son is bitter because he took his mama away. But here the son is getting ready to graduate from high school and he has a four-year scholarship to Brown University. He can't enjoy the fact that his life is getting ready to take off, but he's tethered to the past. Amen. The residue of what happened is so strong in him that he's mad at the man and he's mad at his dad. How can you let this joker come and work for us? The, the, the young man who had did the killing, who had gone to jail, he realizes all of this, and one night the boy following, he gets into the young man's car. The young man has gotten a knife from a friend, and the guy who had killed his mom, he tells him the whole story of how it happened. And he told, he told him that your mama forgave me. And he notices how the boy is looking at him, and he says, go on and do what you're going to do. I'm not going to fight you. And if I don't get a chance, the boy proceeds to stab him a bunch of times, kills him. Then he drives to his daddy and says, Daddy, I need you to help me. And the daddy starts to talk to him about some things. The daddy tells him, you need to turn yourself in. He said, are you going to take uh, up for this murderer? 
But as soon as he called the guy a murderer, he realized that he too was a murderer. See, sometimes we can be so tethered to something that happened in our past, it affects our presence, it affects our future. Long story short, the dad had turned himself in. The dad is going to take responsibility for it. But the young man was riding around, he was thinking about it, and it, the, the Holy Ghost convicted him. The movie ends with him driving to the police department and doesn't show him going inside, but it, it, it really indicates that he decided that he's going to own up for what he's done. Why am I saying all that? I'm trying to get somebody to understand you can't get weary in doing good. Amen. Now, the Bible says to hate what God hates. Amen. Glory to God. But to love what God loves. Amen. Hallelujah. And see, you can't hate a person so bad that you become like them. Because that's what, that's what hate is designed to do. Amen. The hate is designed to try to perpetuate its species. But you've got to decide it, that ain't going to happen with me. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God, glory. Find somebody say, don't get tired of doing good. Glory to God, glory to God. See, when Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, Paul says that, that I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. How many know that God's trying to reveal something in you today? Amen. Glory to God. Uh, and one of the things that the enemy, he's fighting you to try to stay in the pain of your past so that you can't start to show the glory of God right here where you are. Amen. Paul continues to write in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. He says, for our light affliction is but for a moment and is working for us an exceeding eternal weight of glory for we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen they are eternal amen how many got your eyes on the eternal prize and not on what's going on with you right now oh glory to God you, you have to decide tell your name I've decided to make Jesus my choice Oh, glory to God. Look, look, look. See, the Bible says that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Amen. And then with him, there's pleasure forevermore. Amen. And see, the more we do the goodness of God, the more we'll see the goodness of God flow into our lives. Somebody shout amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Nehemiah says it's the joy of the Lord that I, is our strength. Amen. Psalms 90, 90 and 12 tell us, teach us to number our days. Glory to God. And see, in other words, nobody knows the day or the hour that God is coming back. So you got to live today like this your last. Oh, glory. A lot of times we live today like I got tomorrow and I can fix that tomorrow. Oh, but tomorrow is not promised. Oh, come on. Talk back to me now. So I got to do good while I got good. I got time to do good. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I got to be good while I got time to be good. Glory to God. I got to show good because glory to God. He's put me in a place. Look, how many blessed enough to be good to somebody? Oh, hallelujah. And look, look, every now and then, I, I, ain't, I ain't telling nobody to gamble, help me out, dig, I ain't telling nobody to gamble. But every now and then, there's, there's sometimes, and I don't know if it's in, in, in poker or something, you put your double down. Talk back to me now. Well, you, uh, can you do that in Spanish? I don't know. Uh, uh, look, uh, I don't care how good you're doing, every now and then, you need to double down on what you're doing. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. In other words, take doing good to another level. Oh, glory to God. And see, see, because they, oh yeah, I go there, God. See, the enemy knows that you can get to a, a comfortable level of good. And, 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 and it's like sometimes working out. If you got a, oh, help me, Holy Ghost now. If you got a regular workout schedule, you'll get to a point where you're toned. You'll get to a point where everything, oh, I think they call it where you're the plateau. Uh -huh. but, but until you add a little weight or add another set of reps, you'll stay at that level. That level. Oh, but when you put some more reps in there, you put a more weight on there, glory, you get ready to go to another level. So a lot of us are good at some stuff, but I think it's time we added some weight. Yeah. God help me. I think it's time we added some more routines. Because we're getting comfortable at our level of doing good. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on. Oh, Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to help me stay up here so I can finish quicker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God got a future for you. Jeremiah says, glory to God, for I know the thoughts that, and plans that I have for you. Thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a hope and a future. Uh, we like the King James where it says, to give you an expected end. 
Amen. He said, then you will call upon me and you will pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13 says, and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Amen. You see, God has a future. But can I tell you something? Two things about that future. It's God determined and you determined. Amen. God is the one who truly knows what he has planned for you. Amen. But see, you can get with God and you can start to speak in line with God who spoke and then line your words up with God. The Bible says out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. Amen. And go on. When we start saying what God then said about our lives, glory to God, we can start to frame our world with our words. Come on, talk back to me now. See, you, you got to stop saying I'm broken. I'm always going to be broke. Don't be like me. I want a brand. I want this truck, God. I want this console, God. I wanted to have a place where I can put my bill. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry for that. I'm so sorry for speaking that craziness because I had what I said. But, Lord, I think now I'm speaking debt-free truck. Oh, oh I, I thought I'd get two, at least two more people to believe that for me. I'm going to say it again. I'm talking about debt-free truck. Oh, help me now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, uh, oh, oh, now, now that, that's an easy one. I'm talking about debt free new house. Oh, come on now, 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 come on now. I'm talking about walking in divine help. See, see, remember how I told you it's not okay with God for you not to be okay. Oh, glory to God. See, God's trying to tell us, don't get weary in doing good. See, the enemy will try to lure you into this level of believing that it's okay to be in this particular state. When God said, I don't call you the greater. I told you in Deuteronomy, you the head, not the tail. You above only, you not beneath. Eh? You're the lender and not the borrower. Come on now. Glory be to God. You got to start seeing yourself like God sees you. And one of the ways to get there is to not stop doing what God said is good. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a real quick. Okay. In the book of Genesis, the 26th chapter of Genesis, we find a man by the name of Isaac. He's the son of Abraham. He's the promised seed. Amen. He's the son born to Abraham, when Abraham was 100 years old, Abraham is fully persuaded what God said was going to happen. What happened? Amen. So here, here's Isaac. He's the same son that in Genesis chapter 22, God says, offer him up as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And as they're walking up the mountain, uh, uh, Abraham speaks words of faith. Y'all stay here and worship. Me and the lad are going to worship and we coming back. On the way up the mountain, Isaac asked him, I see the wood, I'm carrying the fire, but where is the lamb? Abraham says, the Lord will provide for himself a lamb for the sacrifice. And right when he's ready to sacrifice him, there's a ram revealed, caught in the thicket. Glory to God. See, when you, when, 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 when you decide to follow God, you might not see what God getting ready to do, but God is ready to do something. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Watch this now. And so now, here we find Isaac in the 26th chapter of Genesis. And the same faith that his father had, he has developed. God tells him to stay in the land where there is a famine. Verse 12 of that, verse, of that chapter says, and Isaac sold in the land. And in that land of famine, of drought, he reaped a hundredfold. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. And the, the, the next verse says, he prospered and continued to prosper, and he became very prosperous. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. What's in him now is the ability to do what's good in the face of adversity. And we see it as the chapter goes on and play out. There's a famine in the land. There's a drought in the land. Hallelujah. And Isaac knows of the wells that his father had dug in the land. Isn't it funny that they're experiencing the drought, Deke, but they know that there are wells there that they've stopped up? Woo! Glory to God. Could it be that 
what God's trying to get to you has been stopped up because you stopped doing the good that you should have been doing. Maybe you plateau and you're thinking, okay, what I'm doing should be enough. But God has said, I don't bless you to do more. So Isaac goes there and Isaac undigs the whales. And guess what? Water. What happens? They came and complained. Those are whales. He could have said, the devil is alive. No, he said, cool. Because he realizes that the blessing is on him. And, and look, he went to another well that they had stopped up. And he undug that well. And guess what? Water. And they came in. It's cool. Hallelujah. You, you see, you would say cool. You could say cool when you know you're doing what God has called you to do. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know that there's a blessing upon your life. No matter what somebody takes from you, glory to God, God still got something. If this door closed, God going to open up a bigger door. I didn't just say another door. Come on. A bigger door. And I think, I don't know if it happened a third time. But if it did, he said, cool. Let him have it. Then his servants went and dug two more wells where they found fresh water. You look back at Abraham when Lot was with him. Abraham and Lot became so prosperous that the herds could not graze in the same place. But Abraham told Lot, if you go that way, I'll go this one. If you go this way, I'll go that way. Because Abraham realized where the blessing lied. Amen. Isaac did the same thing. And so that's why Isaac was not weary in doing what was good because he knew God had it. Amen. The scripture tells us in Matthew, uh, Matthew says 160 and 30 fold. Mark says 30, 60 and 100 fold. What I'm trying to get somebody to see this morning, don't get weary in your well doing. Don't allow the pain of the past. Don't allow maybe even negative things that might be going on in your present situation right now. Don't, uh, don't even allow apprehension or uh, 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 anxiety, if you will, about your future to stop you from doing the good, the good that you can do today. Jesus said, I got to work today while it is day. For night coming when no man can work. God has granted us a brand new opportunity in today to do good. Amen. And not to get weary in our well-doing. For we know in due season, at God's appointed time, you shall reap if you don't faint. Come on, give God some glory in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. God's trying to take you somewhere because God got something good for you. Amen. I want you to find, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to do it. I want you to find somebody in this building. Look at them. If it's your spouse, that's a good thing. Do that with them first. Then find somebody else because God don't need you to move. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your spouse, God got something good for you. If it's your spouse, you can add baby on the end of that. A honey boy. Come on. Come on, come on now. Glory to God. And if it's just a good friend, if it's just a good friend, say, God got something good. <laughs> I, uh, look, 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 look. I, I don't know what she said. I don't know what she said, but I got to get with you on that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God ain't through. God ain't through. God ain't through. Come on now. Come on now. God ain't through. Oh, hallelujah. God ain't through. God ain't through. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. We're not going to get weary in our well doing. Oh, hallelujah. God's has some. Mm. Hallelujah. It's a fresh fit. Hallelujah. God's good, amen. So listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Notice, 
The Apostle Paul, come on. The Apostle Paul, when he's penning this, Paul has shifted his whole mindset. He had been trained as a Pharisee. He said, I'm a Pharisee above Pharisees. He had a game plan and he was working it. But when God, hallelujah, called him, he went from working it to working God, working for God. And God took him from faith to faith and from glory to glory. The beautiful thing about God is that God is no respecter of person. He's a respecter of faith. So this morning, if you've got the faith to believe God for a miracle, hallelujah. Mm, okay, God, okay, I'm trying. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah, okay, okay, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Every now and then, I hope y'all don't mind, if I step out of pastoring, and allow the apostolic anointing that is on my life to flow. Yeah. One of my friend's child is suffering. And they've been praying and praying and miracle signs and wonders have happened. But some stuff going on right now. If I'm sane enough or crazy enough, whichever one you want to believe, to believe in the word of God that he has the power to heal, deliver, and set free. We decree and declare that their daughter is healed in the name of Jesus. Oxygen level goes up. Everything lines up according to the way God intended it to be. And we thank you, God, that no weapon form prospers. Lord, we give you the glory. Oh, God. We give you the glory, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. And I wanted to say last night, <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody, I heard somebody say this one time. They were fussing about prayer. Somebody said prayer changes things. They came back and said prayer don't change things. Prayer changes people and people change things. But I, 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 can I just say this? Prayer, change, prayer changes things and prayer changes people. Because sometimes prayer will change a thing and when the people see the thing doesn't change, then the people change. Hallelujah. It, 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 Peter and them had to see the tree dried up from the root. And when they saw the tree dried up from the root, it caused a change to really start to resonate on the inside of them. So every now and then, that's why he says miracles are for unbelievers. That they can, so when we pray that God will change a thing, and God changes that thing, it gives the opportunity for others who see that thing changed in your life to believe that God can do anything but fail. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. Hallelujah. 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 We give him praise right now. We do. And we honor him right now. Amen. And we've heard the word to come forward. And we do know and we do believe. At least we say we believe that prayer changes things. But a lot of times we pray amiss. Amen. We say it. We say we believe it. We believe it. But he knows our heart. And he knows. So we wonder why some things aren't happening. It's because we keep saying it and we saying it and saying it. But deep down in, we really don't believe. We really doubt. So we're praying right now that we can move to another level. 
that we can truly believe that our God is an almighty God. And there is nothing, there is nothing too hard for him. Amen. He does the impossible. Miracles happen every day. Amen. A miracle happened this morning for you. For each and every one of you. You woke up this morning. Every time he wakes you up, that's a miracle. Amen. Amen. We are so blessed, but we take it for granted. So right now, we're just praying right now that we all start walking and we understand that we got to have faith. And we have to believe it. We got to believe what he's saying. Amen? Amen. And we're at a point too right now is that we have faith. I mean, we believe we are, you wouldn't be here or, or you're seeking him or you really believe him. Amen? Amen? But there are some people who don't know. Amen? And there's some people at the sound of my voice, some people online that really don't know. They're, they, they're seeking. They're seeking. And we're here this morning to tell everybody that Jesus is the answer. He told them that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except for by me. And there's some that are seeking. How can I get to the true God? Oh, there's a lot of little G gods out there. But how do I get to the true God? This God that y'all talking about, how do I get there? You get there through Jesus Christ. So right now, we all touch and agree. Do we not touch and agree that we want everybody at the sound of our voice that if they're seeking him, that they will find him? Can you touch and agree with me right now? Give me an amen. 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 So we're going to pray with them. We're going to explain to them that the way you get to God, the path. He said there's only one way, right? And that path is narrow. And we just ask God to show them how to step on that path. Amen. amen. So with me, I need you to pray with me because we're praying for them. Are we not? Because we're all disciples, right? And he told us to go out. So right now, open your mouth as we pray. There's somebody that you have on your mind. There's somebody that you know on your job, in your family. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will truly receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So let's touch and agree. And those who are listening and you don't know him, in the pardoning of your sin. You've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He's there and he's standing on the door and he's knocking. And all you have to do is open the door and allow him to come in. So we will pray with you and repeat this prayer after me. And y'all touch and agree with me and pray with me. Amen. 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 Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. I confess, I don't know you, I'm a sinner, but right now, I ask that you save me. I right now open up the doors of my heart and I ask that you come in. And by faith, I believe, I choose to believe that I have been saved. And by faith, I believe that the Holy Spirit is coming in and dwelling with me. And by faith, I believe that I am now a part of your family. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you're listening to me and you prayed that prayer, and you really meant it. You just wasn't saying it just to say it. You know, a lot of times we say the, the because we learn the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag, we don't even really know what the words say. We just memorized it, right? But if you really prayed that prayer for the first time, please get in contact with us. You can reach us by calling us at 
eight, 90, 15. I have to look over there to Jeanette to keep me straight. <laughs> Amen. Just give us a call or either come by and visit us. We're at 2015 Grove Street in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now we want to, first, uh, the next thing is that if we have anybody that needs special prayer, you've been going through, or you want to intercede on somebody's behalf, right now, do we have anybody that has special prayer? Amen. Come on up. Anybody else? Any kind of special prayer? Come on up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. My name is Diane Jefferson Lodge. We lost our niece a few days ago. And my family is going through it. And we would like to ask for prayer for the whole family. The whole family. The large family. Jefferson Lodge family. The Jefferson, Jefferson Lodge family. The Jefferson family. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Come on, touch and agree with us now. Come on and touch and agree. Okay. And we're praying for the Jefferson family. The Jefferson family lost a niece three days ago. And right now, they're going through. And we're all going to touch and agree with our sister here and believe in that we serve a mighty God who's going to bring peace and comfort to that family. Right now, we pray. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're coming before you and we're touching and agreeing, Lord, that you, and we just believe that you are all powerful, that there is nothing too hard for you. And Lord, we're petitioning you on behalf of our sister here. And we're touching and agreeing, believing that you're moving right now and you're bringing peace to this family, Lord. You bring in comfort. Your word says that blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we thank you that the comforter is coming in and bringing comfort to this family. Oh, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind the attacks of the enemy. We bind the attacks that are trying to cause any kind of division. We bind the attacks that is trying to cause that spirit of depression. We pray for understanding right now. We know that her niece, Lord, that her niece is in a better place. Her niece is with you. We pray for understanding, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you will use this to bring that family close together. Cause them, Lord, to unite, to unite and be on one accord with you in the middle. Oh, Lord, we just pray right now we anoint her. We anoint her as the, as the, as the spokesperson. She will speak to other family members. Oh, we thank you right now that you're going to use her. Use her in a mighty, mighty way. And that in the end, the family will give you the glory and you the honor and you will bring them and lift them up and great and mightiful things will happen. Oh, use her right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, spokesperson. He's calling. Amen. All right. And we touch and agree with anybody else right now. If you're going through, we speak. We serve a mighty God. And we bind anything, any weapon that's gone, that's coming against us in the name of Jesus. And if you need prayer, it's not too late. Come up. Amen. But we bind, we speak prosperity. We speak doors to be opened. Oh, the attacks that may be going against you. We bind them right now in the name of Jesus. Don't we serve a mighty God? But we ask him right now to help each of us to have faith and believe. We ask, but do we really believe? Do we really, really believe? We got to believe. Amen. Amen. And we're going to see a change. A change is coming. Amen. And we will testify. And we would share. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Praise God. And last but not least, 
If you don't have a church home, the doors of our church are open. You're welcome to come and join us. Amen. Amen. We praise God right now. Amen. 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 Praise Thank God. You. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Yes, Lord. We just praise Him. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in Him. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Oh, Amen. Oh, he's the lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord just that one more time. I want to go a bunch of more times, but it won't bother me if he comes back today because we are ready. All right. Are you ready? That's right. He could come at any moment now. And we just pray that. When he come back for the rapture, we want the whole building to be emptied out, right? We don't want anybody left behind. Amen. All righty. Now we're ready to move forward, and we're going to ask Brother Coleman to come forward for our tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everybody. It's tithe and offering time, amen? Amen. You know, the book of Proverbs 21, 26 says, all day long, the wicked or the sinner craves for more, but the righteous gives without sparing. The righteous gives without sparing. And you know, when you talk about that wicked man, uh, all day long, when he works, he craves more. When he get up in the morning, he craves more. When he, when he comes home, he craves more. He sit down for dinner, he craves more. When he go to bed and wake up, he craves more. Even if he go to church, he craves more. It's something, it's something he just missing. But the righteous, in contrast, is just the opposite. He gives without sparing. It's a paradox, you know, something just don't line up. You know, if you give without sparing, it seems like you'll be the one that want more because you're giving, you know, you just, you just give, give, give. But it's not like that in God's world. You know, to give a portion of your earning to God keeps your heart reminded of who God is. And he calls us to give because he blesses us in return. So if you would, I'd like you to go to the book of Proverbs with me. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. I want to read this out of the message. Would you please stand? Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25. So would you please stand? Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. The word of God reads, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. May Lord a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for what our ears have heard and what we received in our heart. And Lord, we pray that we're not just hearers, but we're also doers. And Lord, we thank you right now as we come to this part of the service, Lord, the tithe and the offering. We pray, Lord, that, that your word that has gone forward, it has been received and it's on fertile ground. And that, Lord, now that your people, Lord, they will come and that they will give and they will give willingly. Because, Lord, you love a cheerful giver. We pray, Lord, not for the amount that they give, but, Lord, for, again, for the condition of their heart. We pray, Lord, for the ones that want to give that have not. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, for this church as we receive these tithes and these offerings, that, Lord, that we'll be good stewards, be good stewards of your resources. Lord, we love you, and, Lord, we thank you. We lift your name on high. It's your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Would you bring your tithes and offering from the rear of the church around the walls, please? Thank you. And my sister, Sister Blackwood. 